Thank you so much for inviting me to this event, and many thanks to the Munich Security Conference, to the, to the uh, Federal Minister of Foreign Affairs of Germany for co-hosting the event, uh, and, uh, and to you, Ambassador Heusken, uh, Christoph, because for me it is an honor to be part of a COP again. Uh, as, as the first ever um, Secretary General of NATO, I participated uh, at the Conference of the Parties, the COP in Glasgow last year. And uh, even though it's only virtual, it's great to be back at the COP uh, this time. Um, and um, and uh, my understanding is that your question was about uh, whether we are, or to what extent we're able to follow up what we agreed in the, in the uh, uh, NATO um, uh, strategic concept that was agreed at the NATO summit in June this year where we actually make climate change an issue for NATO for the first time. We have to realize that, that in, the, in, the, in the strategic concept that uh, uh, was valid until we updated or made a new one uh, in June, climate change is not mentioned. Um, then uh, we have realized over the last couple of years that climate change, uh, of course, is something that NATO has to address. Uh, and, there, and there are, in a way, three, uh, three, three things that NATO has to do. Um, one is to, uh, to fully understand the link between climate change and security. Uh, climate change impacts security. Climate change is a crisis multiplier. It, it increases uh, competition over scarce resources, water, food, land. It, it forces millions of people to flee. Uh, so climate change creates conflicts, uh, exacerbates uh, conflicts. Uh, and since climate change matters for security, climate change matters for NATO. And we need to fully understand that link because we need to understand the different threats we are faced with. Uh, so we are uh, uh, building up our capacity when it comes to analyze, understand, assess the link between uh, climate change, uh, wars, conflict uh, and security. Uh, the second thing uh, uh, which uh, matters for NATO is that, of course, climate change, more extreme weather, uh, uh, windier, wilder, uh, wetter weather, matters for military operations. We have uh, uh, a training mission in Iraq, uh, and they have experienced more than 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, 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 our equipment, our uniforms, how to adapt to uh, more extreme weather. We have the melting of the ice in the Arctic. It matters for the strategic importance of the Arctic. Uh, increased sea levels matters for all our naval bases. So we just have to adapt uh, our operations, our missions, our equipment, our uniforms to uh, climate change, to more extreme weather. And we are in the process of doing that by incorporating climate change in our military planning, our capability targets and everything we do. And thirdly, of course, uh, our armed forces have to be part of the efforts to re reduce emissions. And if you look at, what shall I say, traditional military equipment, uh, b heavy battle tanks, battleships, planes, they are not uh, normally very green. Uh, they emit a lot. Uh, so we need to find a way to reduce military emissions. I attended my first uh, COP in 1997 in Kyoto. And there I remember that a military missions was explicitly exempt, exempted from reporting on a mission uh, 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 from different uh, countries. Uh, so they were exempted from the whole, the whole uh, equation. Uh, now military missions are part of what is counted, but the data is not good. So we are now, uh, 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 we have launched a project in NATO to standardize how we report on emissions from military operations because that's the first step towards reducing military emissions. Uh, and I strongly believe that in the future we need uh, green, uh, but also, of course, effective military capabilities. But in the future, the most effective military capabilities will be the green and environmentally friendly ones. So that's the three things we need to do and are doing in NATO. Understand the link between climate change and security. Adapt our military missions and operations to more extreme weather. And thirdly, reduce military emissions, starting by mapping military emissions in a much, much better way than we do today.